now, so let's constrain him to the playing field. We're going to do that by creating walls around the edges of this field, and we're going to create those walls from primitive cubes. So let's grab our primitive cube and import that. The moment we import that, that becomes a cube mesh object. And what we're going to do here is before we build one wall, we'll create a group to hold all the walls. And so that will be a spatial node. We'll call that walls. And under walls, we will start creating our physics objects. We know it's going to be a static body. We'll call that West Wall. West Wall needs a visual representation. That mesh geometry is loaded from our recently imported file. It will also need collision detection. So let's grab a collision shape. That shape will get its collision surface from this cube. And we see that is looking right. And so now we will transform this wall such that it looks like a wall. All right. Um, scale it negative 0.5 in the y, 2 in the excuse me, negative 0.5 in the x, 2 in the y, and 20 in the z. And then we will translate it to negative 20 on the x. Now that we've got one good wall, let us use that as the east wall. So we are simply duplicating it. And moving it over. Come on. And now that we have that, let's duplicate that. Scale that to two and point five. So now it is long, and now we want to move it. It's just that. There we go. All right, so now we've got a north wall. Let's make a south wall again, duplicate south wall. And translate in the opposite direction by the same amount. field it's completely closed in let's see if that's working so far so good awesome all right so we got our field and our guy is trapped in our walls and now what we want to do is create our pickup object 
our pickup object is going to be created from one of these walls here. So let's take the south wall, duplicate it one more time, and this will be our pickup. Us reparent the pickup so that it's not inside the walls group. Parent it to the world. Awesome. And we will also want to make sure that our pickup can be animated because we want to uh, make it spin so that it looks nice and it looks like it's interesting so that the player will pick it up. So we use the uh, replace tool to replace that uh, static and turn it into a kinematic. Now it is the wrong size because it's a wall. So let us rescale this thing to 0.5 in every axis. And let us move it back to the origin And now we can't see it because the ball is hiding it. So let's hide the ball with this eyeball icon. So that disappears. And now we can see our cube is inside the floor. So let's raise it up one unit. And let's make it interesting. We will rotate it. Let's turn on snap, make sure we're in world space, and select our pickup. And now we're going to rotate the pickup such that it's 45 degrees x axis, come on, 45, and 45 in the z. 45. That looks good. And now we are going to animate this guy with script. So once again, we're going to create another script. It's called pickup spin. And we are not going to watch me do a lot of typing. Instead, we are just going to copy what we need. And so all we really want to do is keep track of the speed of our rotation. And we want to export that so that we can tweak it in the uh, scene editor. And then we need a couple of more values here. This is how much we're going to rotate on every axis when we make our cube spin. And this is, these are the axes on which we will do the rotation. And when our pickup object enters the scene tree, we will tell it to set process true. Again, this is what allows us to get our logic to run on every frame. The logic that we want to run on every frame is this right here, which is get the, tr get the transform for our cube. Take that transform and rotate it on the X axis by 15 degrees. Um, scale that by uh, how fast the frames are being rendered and scale it by whatever our tweak factor is for our speed. Do the same thing for the Y and Z axis, and then take that resultant rotated transform and simply set that as the transform for the pickup object. And so this will have the effect of slightly rotating the cube on every axis, every frame. 
So if that works properly, we ought to see a spinning cube. Um, our viewport is moving because that spinning cube looks like it knocked our player. And so made it, the player started rolling, but the player is invisible, so we didn't see that. But that's what happened. So now that we've got our pickup behaving the way we want it, we want all our pickups to behave the same way. So let's make a subscene so we can instance our pickup objects all over the level. Uh, subscenes can be created by converting the current selection into a subscene. And so let's do that. We're going to call our subscene simply pickup. And let's verify that the that the file that we just saved, uh, yes, it's saved, but now we want to make sure that it looks like what we expect it to look like. So let's open that scene, go to pick up, and yes, indeed, we have our three nodes representing our pickup. That looks like that behaved properly. So let's go back to that recent scene we were at, which was level. And our cameras are a little jacked up right now. So um, now what we want to do is uh, instance our, our pickup objects around the play field. So in order to do that, I'm going to go up to the top view. So that is going to be directly over the playing field and allow us to move in the ZX plane. When we move in the ZX plane, I want to be using the move tool uh, instead of the select tool. So now that we have this pickup object as a scene tree, a separate scene tree, we don't need it in here anymore. So I'm just going to delete it. And I'm going to create a new group called pickups. Oh, sorry. Let me create the spatial node first before I change its name. Now I'm going to call it pickups. And I'm going to stick all of my newly created pickup objects in there. So this is a special feature which allows uh, the instance, uh, a node feature, allows me to bring in subscenes. And now uh, this subscene is coming from that file that we uh, created. So I want a lot of these, and so let me move them around. So let me duplicate it. Duplicate it. It. All right, so we've got a play field. And bingo, we've got our pickups animating. We've got a uh, user confined to our playing field. So far, so good. Now what we want to do in our next video is have the player pick these things up. So uh, let's do that.